Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at beta 1405 for Command Modern Operations. Now this is uh, one of those betas that's got a couple little things kind of here and there, nothing like catastrophically weird or anything like that. There's definitely some bugs that um, I know they're already working on uh, diligently to make sure that we can kind of address, but like anything beta, expect things to be broken. That's part of the fun. First things first, uh, if you do want to go ahead and install the beta, it's really easy. You just simply come over to the beta itself. You right click, you hit the properties button. And if you scroll down to betas, you'll notice there's an option here where you can actually just select open beta. At that point, it'll actually go ahead and grab all the critical files that you need and basically toss them up there and make it a little bit easier for you to go ahead and get. Now, what does this beta add? Well, there's a couple of little kind of, I call them under the hood things, and then there's a sort of more user interface things, and uh, there's of course something very amusing to fire, but we'll get there when we get there. So the first thing you're going to notice here is if you open up anything that is HTML based, such as the database viewer, you're going to observe that everything moves a lot smoother depending on uh, your existing system here. You know, when I click on things, this is much, much, much more responsive than it is. And when you take a look at the formatting, the formatting is also just a little bit cleaner than it used to be, making your life a little bit better as far as a lot of these things goes. And I think that's kind of a neat one as far as, um, you know, basics like that. Another thing you're probably going to observe is uh, this little tiny thing that's going to be hanging on the side of certain units inside the map. Uh, you'll notice here it says con and it has a little letter S there. Uh, the other thing you'll probably observe is if we um, go over to God's eye view real quickly here, you will see that you'll see something on the side of ships as well. Now, if I were to move, you'll see this new thing that pops up that now says wake L. Now, the interesting thing is this is simply going to be a representation of the fact that that particular unit is producing a giant white line of some variety. Obviously, if you're dealing with an airplane, the giant white line is going to be a contrail. And of course, if you're dealing with a ship, you're going to be dealing with a, basically the long white line behind you that is going to build that water that you turned up. One of the things you'll find very, very interesting here is if I take something like the Kuznetsov and I go ahead and order him down to creep speed, it don't matter. Yeah, he's doing one knot and he's already got a wake. On the flip side, my Osa here is doing 14 knots. If I send him down to creep speed, uh, you'll notice that as he starts to slow down here, the uh, wake, of course, will speed up time just a little bit. You can see the wake disappears entirely. You actually can now use this tactically. Uh, you can basically reduce the visibility of this particular unit simply basically by slowing down a little bit. Now, obviously big ships like the Kuznetsov, which is uh, the reason I grabbed this one, there's no speed you can go at that's not going to give you a wake. Whereas little ships, of course, you can slow down substantially and basically reduce your ability to be spotted. Now, that's kind of a tricky thing here. Now, the other thing I probably have, if you take a look over here, is I have uh, two Tupolev 142s. You'll notice uh, one here is at 28,000 and the other one's at 27,000. You can see we're getting a very large contrail here. Now, if I were to quickly switch over to my other team here, um, this Hawkeye, by the way, is just sort of chilling. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go tell him to go up here so he doesn't accidentally ruin the fun. So I have a watchtower here, and I just want to quickly show you something here as uh, we get a little bit closer. And what we're basically waiting for is our two buddies to get into visual range here. And it's, it's, it's going to take them a minute. I don't want to go, like, do one of those, like, you know, kind of a thing. Like, uh, just kind of make it go. This is a pretty substantial distance. I think this is, yeah, this is 100 miles. So even at 15x, uh, that's, it's going to take about a minute to get there kind of a thing. Thing. So we'll give them a few moments to kind of go catch up here. Uh, let's see, go check that. Uh, any second now, any second now. Again, my little dude to my watchtower, it's perfectly good time of day. And we also have an excellent sensor, so it shouldn't be any issue as far as detection goes. Getting closer, getting closer. Oh, you can feel it. There we go, pause. Nice. So what we see here is we can observe that this particular one here, if I go ahead and turn on this view here, our contrail buddy here, uh, you can actually see here that we have an estimate of his altitude of 28,000 feet. And we can see we picked him up at 50 miles with the Mark I eyeball. We did not identify him with my special fancy low light TV, but we were able to pick him up at an insane distance because of the contrail he is currently making. Now, of course, if I pause this for a second, here, give it a few moments. Even though he's that far away, I can basically identify him. At this point, my LLTV is uh, kicking in here. You know, that works well. Again, the LLTV does not have unlimited range. The eyeball picked him up. Now, the cool thing you'll notice here is that other two live visually we have not picked up at all, even though he's literally right there. And uh, again, we're sweeping the sky, we're sweeping the sky, and he's basically going to overfly before we're actually going to be able to identify him because of the fact that he is not marking with that contrail. You can see I was able to pick him up at just about 10 on the nose. So now we have new visual tactical things to be thinking about as well. Now, of course, this beta brought us one more thing, which is a ton of fun. And um, we have to reset the scenario here so we can show how goofy fun it is. So let's go ahead and grab our blue team here real fast. Open this one up. 
And they added um, <laughs> a rather amusing weapon. I guess that's the best way to say it. So I'm going to go and flip my radar on here. I'm also going to flip on the radar here. Actually, we don't need all these radars, but that's okay. Because it, I won't need it. But I have a pair of F-18s here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to order my two F-18s to get airborne. Uh, we have enemy targets to shoot at. And you can see my uh, Hawkeye here has no difficulty identifying all the different targets that are flying. Actually, not only did it see them, it's actually already identified them, making my dive a little easier. Come on, F-18s, come on out. There we go. So the F-18s, of course, are equipped with this rather amusing new weapon. Um, let me go ahead and open this one up real fast here. Known as the AIM-174 Bravo. This is, you know, it's pretty standard. Um, if you want to think about it another way, basically someone I said, I got an idea. Let's take an SM-6 and put it on an airplane. <laughs> This thing's a little absurd. Um, not only does it talk to like you know ships and stuff like that through data link technology and all those other components, it's got all the usual kind of modern stuff. You can actually shoot down ballistic missiles. It's got a really, really, really big warhead on it. And uh, when you scroll down here, uh, you can see that it has some capability getting pretty high. Um, what is that? It's about 147,000 feet. So there's basically no place you can hide from this thing as far as altitude goes, which is kind of amusing. But my favorite part of this weapon is its range of uh, 230 nautical miles. Now, to give you an idea of this, um, keep in mind, I did not tell him to fire. But um, you can see he's already launched two of these missiles at our little Tupolev 142s here. And uh, we can see that this thing is eh, it's about 80, 90,000 feet. And it's just kind of basically traveling a parabolic arc. And it's basically going to drop down from the sky on these uh, poor Tupolevs here. The way this weapon basically works is it chills in the upper atmosphere and drops. Uh, that's kind of how it does its magic. It's also an enormous weapon, which has a big impact but you can see they flipped on automatically and i basically got to pause i don't know that we're going to get a connect and hit oh we got one we got two <laughs> now check this out so there's another enemy target over here um that's a distance of oh uh, let's see here we got about uh, 218 miles there that's enough we'll go ahead and I'll lock on to him like that oh we have all sorts of with the paradox here uh we'll go ahead and launch a one i'm pretty confident we're not going to hit it at that range but because science uh, we're going to try it anyway so what he's going to do here is he's going to try to close into a range where he can actually utilize the weapon. Uh, just because he can go that distance does not necessarily mean you're not dealing with the target that can maneuver. So we do have to get ourselves a little bit closer here. Also, I don't know why we're so low. <laughs> Must have been a button I pushed at some point. Let's go double check to make sure it did. Oh, there it goes. Bonk. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. Let's go grab our 3D view here. Some lovely tack view action. People always ask me, uh, you know, is tack view worth it kind of a thing like that? I, I, I won't comment. But yeah, watch this. This is so cool. Basically, what this weapon's going to do is it's just going to go up. And you can see the curvature of our lovely Earth there as it comes arcing around. I'll go zoom out just a little bit. And it just goes up and up and up and up. And now one of the wet things you probably notice is my two F-15s turned away. And at no point did my F-18s ever actually lock onto the target. They didn't even turn their radars on because they didn't have to. Because the Hawkeye is the thing that is actually guiding this weapon to the target. Which is just... It's, it's absurd. I mean, this is like Bowmark ranges, so for those of you familiar with that particular platform. Now I remember going up. Oh my goodness, look at how high that thing fires up. That's insane. My gosh, what a range in that weapon. And again, this is an air-launched weapon. It is a little absurd, but um, I think it's just kind of amusing too. All right, there it goes. So we've got a little contrail. Notice it actually lost its contrail because there was basically no water vapor in the upper atmosphere for it to react with. So here it comes. It's a drop it in. You can see that lovely uh, Tupolev 142. He was like, oh, I'm well into safe range. Did you notice he just spotted it and uh, did some quick aggressive turns there trying to desperately get out of the way? Oh, boy. Here it comes. I'll, see, the problem is my brain immediately goes into, uh, like, you know, like those little James Bond, like, strings you get at the last second. Dun, 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 dun. Kind of a thing like that. Uh, whenever you're about to see the missile, you know, it goes quiet for just a moment. And then, of course, it plays like the uh, da da da, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Of course, our weapon did not hit, so, which did not surprise me in the same thing. We can actually see here that it was chaff that defeated our missile. It wasn't any fancy maneuvering or anything like that. Uh, one thing I find kind of fun, though, uh, what is the, uh, no, it was actually seduced. So we don't actually know if the weapon was actually going to make connection. But you can see my F-18s already fired a second one there. Well, we, we don't want to leave people without, I'll give the people what they want, right? Woo! Splat. Let's see what the final to hit was there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, SRAM is a 90% POH, which makes sense. It's modern. Da -da -da, fun, fun, agility. Our probability to hit was 89% at a range of, uh, let's get the range there, 124 miles. That's incredible. 
incredible. And remember, this F-18 never turned on its radar. This was all guided by the E-2, which makes me think these are much, much more important platforms than they did. So as you can see, some quick little updates here, all kind of little things here and there. I know there's bigger things to come, so to speak, but it's pretty cool. And I really, really enjoy this little guy. Uh, definitely will need an option to adjust that. And of course, it would be great if we had an option, if I could like press F2 and like right here, it would show me like where my contrails start or something. That would be awesome. Enjoy.